Hi, my name is Brian. In this video, I'll give you an overview of how to work with multiple photo libraries using Power Photos on the Mac. I'll review how photo libraries are stored on your Mac, how to create new libraries, switch between them, import photos, storing libraries on external and network drives, and how the photo system library and iCloud photos work when you have more than one library. You can download Power Photos for free from fatcatsoftware.com slash powerphoto to give it a try. When you start using Apple Photos on your Mac, the only way to view and manage those photos is through the Photos app itself. But where are the photos actually stored on your computer? By default, Photos creates an item called Photos Library inside the Pictures folder inside your Home folder. Photos takes care of managing everything inside the library for you. However, on the Mac, you're not limited to just having a single photo library. You can create a new library that contains an entirely separate set of photos. In Power Photos, you do that by clicking the plus button in the toolbar and choosing New Library. I'll do that now, and I think I'll make a separate library to store my cat photos. So I'm going to name my new library Cat Photos. You'll see here that this new library will be created in my Pictures folder. I'll click Create, and the new library appears above, beneath my default library in Power Photos library list. I'll also take a peek at the Pictures folder in the Finder, and you'll see that the Cat Photos library has been created there. Now, if I open the Photos app, you'll see that it still shows me the content of my default library. This is because whenever you open Photos directly, it'll show you whichever library you opened in Photos most recently. This is referred to either as the active library or just the last open library, which is denoted by a green check mark next to it in Power Photos. To open my Cat Photos library, I can double click it in Power Photos, and Power Photos will open it up in the Photos app for me. You also see that the green check mark is now next to the cat photos library since it was the most recently opened photos. One thing to note here is that there is no such thing as a power photos library. All the libraries you're dealing with are photos libraries going to be used with, viewed with the photos app, whether or not you continue using power photos in the future. So there's no lock in involved in using power photos to help manage your libraries. My cat photos library starts out empty. So I'll go ahead and import a few cat photos into it like so. If I switch back to Power Photos, you'll see that Power Photos now shows those new cat photos in the Cat Photos library as well. Let's switch back to my default library by double clicking, and now we're back to seeing the default library in Photos. If I double click Cat Photos again, then once again we see the Cat Photos in the Photos app. You can create as many photo libraries as you want, and you can store them pretty much wherever you want, including XKernel and Network Drive. This can be useful if you start to low run on free space on your internal drive and lets you offload some of your photos to an external while still keeping everything organized in the Photos app like you're used to. The main rule of thumb is to only store your libraries on a Mac formatted drive, either Mac OS Extended or APFS. If you already have another Photos library you'd like to work with, such as a backup copy of a library or one that was copied from another Mac, you can click the plus button in Power Photos and choose Add Library. PowerPoint will do a spotlight search of your Mac for any photo libraries that aren't in its own list and let you select one or more to add the power photos. You can also add a library by dragging it from the finder and dropping it into the library list. You can use the minus button to remove a library from power photos if you no longer want to have it in the list. I'll do that now to remove my cat photos library. Removing the library from power photos does not delete the library on disk though. As you can see, if I now check my pictures folder, the cat photos library is still there. If you do want to delete the library entirely, you can either drag it to the trash, or if you hold down the option and shift keys while removing it in Power Photos, then Power Photos will also send the library to the trash for you. The last things I'd like to cover are the system photo library and how multiple libraries interact with iCloud Photos. While you can have as many photo libraries as you like, at any given time, only one of those libraries is designated as the system photo library. System photo libraries treated specially in two ways. First, in any other app that lets you select photos from your photo library, only the contents of the system photo library will be shown. There. For example, when you're composing a message in Apple Mail, you can click the photo browser button in the toolbar, and it'll show you a little window where you can choose a photo from your library to attach to the email. This window will only show you photos that are in your current system photo library and not any of your other libraries. This applies to any app that provides such a chooser, including things like your desktop and screensaver settings as well. The system photo library is also the only library that can have iCloud photos enabled. So if you have iCloud photos enabled on your system, photos will sync only the system library with the content you have in iCloud. 
All the other libraries on your Mac are local libraries only and will not sync their content to iCloud. If you want to change which library is your system library, you can do that by opening the library you want to use in the Photos app and then opening the Photos Settings window. There's a button there labeled Use as System Photo Library. If that button is disabled, that means the library you have open is already the System Photo Library. Clicking the button will designate the open library as the new System Photo Library. In Power Photos, you'll see this System Library label update to show below your new System Library as well. Now, if you do have iCloud Photos enabled and you switch your system library, this will turn off iCloud Photos syncing in the process. So your previous system library will no longer continue syncing with iCloud once you make the change. If you want, you can then enable iCloud Photos on your new system library, and Photos will start syncing the content of your new system library with iCloud. Do be careful doing this, though, since this will both upload all the photos from your new system library into iCloud and download everything from iCloud into your new system library. If you're not careful, depending on exactly what photos you have, you may end up with a whole bunch of duplicates as well as eating a bunch of extra disk space. So plan carefully before doing something like that. So those are the basics of working with libraries and powerful. I hope this video is helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch at fatcatsoftware.com support. Thanks.